In one of my previous videos, the wireframe shader and vertex masking, uh, I stepped through a process of being able to uh, basically overlay one of your meshes using a wireframe material and then to offset that um, that wireframe material to be able to make it appear like it's kind of a, a wireframe over the top. And I want to give credit where it's due. Um, thanks to Eider, I may be about your name, Eider Ruid, he had made a comment about using uh, the Vertex World Space Normal as opposed to the setup that we had. So that's what I'm going to show you, which is the improved kind of version 2.0 of using this wireframe, which will give you much better results. So let's dive in. On my screen, I've got the uh, basically the same mesh setup that we had before, where I have this kind of you know skull, and then I've got that same mesh duplicated on top, and then this wireframe material applied to it. Now, before I jump into the material, um, we'll, I'll just I'll just kind of explain a little bit about the the benefits of this and not. So, on the left is the original, and on the right is this new one. So. The, the way that this worked before, um, you know, let's just open up the material and I'll show you. So the original setup was using this object position and subtracting the absolute world position and then multiplying by this parameter, which was we just called our world position offset. And we plug that into our world position offset, which was great um, if you made small little minor adjustments. The problem became when you made large adjustments, you actually started to get this disconnection between the mesh and the wireframe. So let me just close this and I'll, I'll show you. So um, we've got materials, just so you guys understand. So there's material and material instance. The material instance is what applies, uh, what's applied to the wireframe. So it's just easier for us to control in real time. So I'm gonna open this wireframe, uh, which is the old one, which again, it's using that, that same structure. And if I start to adjust this world position offset, you'll see really quickly when I scale it up in extremes, that's that disconnect I was talking about. So this method um, was great in theory, but honestly, it, it's really not, um, what you should be using and to have better control. So we're going to nix this guy and let me go ahead and just open up the new one and show you. Um, you guys, of course, can watch the old video. I'm not going to make this very long um, to kind of explain the process. But long story short, this is the new setup that we want. Um, again, thank you very much to Eider for this suggestion. I know a couple of people mentioned it, too, but he gets it first. Um, and so with that, instead of us using this object position and subtracting our absolute world position, we're going to use the vertex normal uh, world space, which if you right click, you can just type in vertex and then it will be vertex normal world space. So that's the parameter that we want. And we're going to do essentially the exact same thing as before and multiply it by a scalar value. Now, by adding this divide of 10 just makes it so when we, we move that slider, it's not as extreme. Um, it's just finer increments. So that's the setup. That's the new part. So if there's anything you get from this, just literally copy those nodes, plug that into your world position, um, and you'll have much better results. So what does that look like? So again, this is our master material for this. Very, very simple. And I've just created a material instance from that. And that is what is applied to uh, the skeleton on the right. So let me go ahead and open this guy up. And then you can see. So as we start to scale this, you see, get much better results. We have, you know, essentially what is that cage, which is what we we're trying to shoot for before. So I'll admit that the first step was probably not the best one, but we've corrected it. So that's literally it. So this is a great way, great technique of, you know, being able to use the power of the real time engine that is Unreal Engine and be able to overlay this wireframe while still retaining all of your materials underneath. So uh, again, kind of w without diving too deep, but branching off of what the original video was, it's just simply the scale, the, the actual mesh duplicated on top of itself and then the wireframe material applied to it. So quick update. Again, thank you guys for the suggestions and uh, how to improve this. So um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Catch you on the next one.